As we go into game two between EU and NA's Method Orgs on the mother load. Well, hopefully they were able to kind of shake off those uh, the, the mental drought that they had on that last map. Method and A is really going to need to bring it here if they want to stay alive in that upper bracket. Method EU, Method and A busting out right away, getting ready for the big pull across. You can already see Yoda on the distance on Method and A's side, grabbing tricks of the trade. So thankfully, when we talked to Method and A, they actually said Metalot is one of their best dungeons. Now, the problem with Metalot, they said, is that there's still some RNG involved and things can happen in this dungeon, but it's still one of their best maps. And they already uh, showed that they can do really well as they played this, uh, this map already. They only had one or two deaths at the very start on this very first pool. I think it was uh, Shakib and Yoda that uh, Shakib and Lighty that died at the very start here. But other than that, they had a very clean run and a very fast run. So uh, we'll see what they do this time around. We will indeed. And Motherload is a dungeon we've seen twice already today in, t in the, some of the previous series. So we know just the dangers of this trash, and especially when it hit, hits that raging, not to mention Necrotic, on the tank. There's just so much splash damage on the group, not to mention huge amounts of tank damage coming in. So trash, very front load in this dungeon. 80% or so if it will be done and pulled into that first boss. And it can be extremely, extremely volatile. Yeah, one more thing to note, though, is that uh, Method U, of course, was able to watch Method NA play this Metal Load uh, yesterday already. So uh, in case Method U's strategy was actually slower than Method NA's, they could be like, oh, you know what, guys? We have to change something. We have to be faster. We have to beat Method NA. They have a very fast strategy, so we need to change something. And they had yesterday or half of the day yesterday and today to practice for this exact matchup. So I think both of those teams are going to show some very risky and some very big strategies here. Big strategies and big pulls here out of Method EU as they combine their first Reaping Wave with a huge pull. Peacekeepers coming in left and right as well. Now, I did see a uh, double Mech Jockey on the side there. I'm not sure if they used both of them into one Peacekeeper or if they meant to separate them in the first place, but nonetheless, huge amounts of damage coming in for Method EU as now starts to back off and get rid of those Necrotic Stacks. Already at 25%, meaning he's 50% unhealable. Yoda getting a charge in and dipping low, but no proc there for that cheat death as Nerf Clap accruing not only the necrotic stacks but a bunch of the reaping ones too getting the dispel from jb as they chisel down the rest of their first reaping wave and the thugs as well yeah the necrotic is actually a big problem as you can see now actually dropping very low here as well mer is getting charged now having so many uh, necrotic stacks and very hard to heal as you just now managed to get away from the mobs starting to kite now and dropping the necrotic too but uh, shakib actually going down for method and as he got charged by the thug he was probably raging from his own raging ability plus raging from the affix too and he just did so much damage he basically got one shot by the spot here now Heroic leaping out, making sure that he doesn't chunk down and proc his trinket. And, you know, I actually caught up with Shakib yesterday. And he was beating himself up over the fact that he died twice in this dungeon oh, yesterday no. via a charge from the thug into a Shadow Smash. So once again, just so unlucky, gets charged by the thug and gets killed. They did not use uh, the battle res there, though. So he's back up on his feet right now. And both battle reses are available for the teams. As now trinket actually has proc. Not going to have that available again for six minutes on Method EU side, combining their second round of reaping with another mass trash pull making sure to get interrupts on those ice spritzers. Yeah, you just have to be so careful. And it, it's the job of the healer, of the Rastro Druids, to make sure that they use their Soothe, their Raging Dispel, on the right targets. Because those thugs need to be dispelled constantly. But we also have Raging, right? So you need to make sure that you're also dispelling Jockeys, if there's any, because they do so much uh, single target damage to people. You also need to dispel uh, Assassins, for example, to remove the tank damage. And we see Nerf just drop so low, but he did manage to get rid of the Necrotic stacks. And Yoda also dropped pretty low, but he did manage to get Get healed back up and you can see those charges coming charge. in on jb you need to dispel those attacks as much as possible yeah jb certainly quite stressed here with the amount of chunking damage going on in the group now nerf clap i don't believe has actually proc'd his trinket uh, nor does yoda have a proc on that g death we'll see exactly as those uh, party frames update out of combat sometimes they do update just a bit slow but method you here trying to finish off the rest of the trash to proc their six reaping wave so it seems that what method you strategy here is to basically pull enough trash to spawn their next reaping wave grab that reaping and pull once again the next round of trash which will then spawn the subsequent reaping so they just have a very good ebb and flow going on here about to hit 60 percent and proc their third reaping they're a, a, a fair bit ahead of method and a right now yeah, and one more thing to note that we didn't really talk about earlier is that the Bloodlust usage. So Method U actually used their Bloodlust on the very first pool, uh, while Method and A is saving their Bloodlust. Now, we've seen this before by Method and A. They were actually saving it uh, for approximately eight minutes into the dungeon where they would pull the boss and use the Bloodlust there for the DK damage to get more single target damage and, of course, the tyrannical dungeon as, uh, as well. 
But Method EU uh, kind of has this similar strategy, if I remember correctly, from the cups where would, they wouldn't uh, use their blood straight away and save it for the boss. But now they changed up their strategy and actually used it to the start of the dungeon. Use it indeed, and Method are actually having a nice little catch up here with huge amounts of damage coming out of not only Shakib, of course, but just crazy damage coming out of Nerf Clap, the Prot Warrior tank on Method and A to try and get a bit of Claw of Hope near Method EU, who has proc their third reaping and once again typically has combined it with probably just just enough trash to proc their fourth reaping wave, which we expect for them to grab into the coin operated crowd pummeler, the first boss of the dungeon. One more peacekeeper joins the fray just around the corner of the house there uh, for Method EU. As Method and A is 55% trash on the board and will soon be proccing their third round of reaping. But as you mentioned, Nagura, that bloodlust could be a turning factor for the teams later on. Definitely. It will totally depend when exactly they choose to use it. We see Sally actually going down for Method EU. They do have a battle rest because they do have a DK uh, in the team, so they did manage to get him back up. But this could have been a disaster if they would have played their usual setup, which is double Rogue Monk. Then there were, was no battle rest available, but thankfully they do have the DK rest to get Sally back up. So now they have no more battle rests available to them. So if anything else happens, they need to either run back or do something else. And uh, at this point, once this Peacekeeper is down, they will proc their 80% Reaping Wave already. And they're most likely going to pull the Reaping Wave into the boss. Yeah, as long as Daily is healthy on mana, which he is right now, about 80% mana for him right now. Getting a couple of regrows out as that last Peacekeeper dies. They'll have just a moment to get out of combat should he need to drink, but he doesn't care. They get right in there and get as much damage in on the Pummeler as they can as Method and A, 69% on Trash, looking to proc their fourth Reaping Wave as well. They still have the Peacekeeper the triple pack, of course, in front of the boss, too. But Method EU doesn't care. They get ready with the fourth Reaping Wave here and are getting ready to pop their cooldowns on the crowd-operated uh, coin-operated crowd pummeler crowd <laughs> that has a 150% increased damage taken from those foot bombs. Yeah, it's just, if you look at the final time currently, it's uh, seven minutes into the dungeon and they're already on 83% trash and they're pulling the boss right now. So incredible time by Method EU. Method A, on the other hand, as I remember correctly, they did pull the boss at around eight minutes the last time they played this dungeon. So they're uh, ahead of their no normal in their schedule when it comes to timing, but Method EU just doing the trash at the start so much faster compared to Method A, just doing such a good job. But again, they're out of battle rest, so any sort of mistake that Method EU is gonna do right now, and we have seen them make mistakes before in oh, Mother yes. Load. The minefield. Uh, it's going to cost them a lot without any battle rests available to them. Yes, the minefield of destiny for Azalea <laughs> uh, during, I believe, Week 2 Cup was uh, quite unfortunate, but Method EU here sitting pretty on 83%, 47, 83% uh, trash, 43% now on the coin-operated crowd problem with the first boss of the dungeon, as Method A is now at 86% trash, slightly ahead of Method EU, and has pulled the first boss with their fourth reaping wave as well. Hopefully we're going to see that bloodlust come out of them. There it is, just as I say that, it lights up on the screen on the right side there and they're going to try to catch up here this is where they need to try and turn it around and counter method eu's bloodlust at the beginning of the dungeon which is quite efficient in my opinion yeah, this Bloodless might actually just boost them uh, on boss DPS by quite a lot because because of just DK, right? You have the Reaping Wave boosting the single target damage of the DK and then you also have the Bloodless on top of that. So we can see Shaki just doing an insane amount of damage. Of course, uh, this damage is not single target only. It's, of course, damage to the Reaping Wave as well. Unfortunately, we can't really see how much damage he did on the boss, but I can guarantee you he did a lot of damage. And Method E, on the <laughs> other hand, <laughs> is on 30% uh, on uh, the first boss here. Afterwards, they're most likely going to do a big pull. And we've seen teams struggle to this trash pack right after this boss because it's so much damage on the tank and uh, if you don't interrupt all the cast it's going to be even more damage so definitely going to keep an eye on method of use pull here yeah those rock lancers are very very spicy and now does i believe have his trinket back right now we're at almost in the nine minute mark and he procced it pretty early on i don't see the debuff present on his player frame but there goes Jinji getting ready with his tricks of the trade and getting a sap on that earth shaper in the back not wanting to have too many of those earth um those uh, rock lances go out as now gets in and pulls already rock getting up in count for the um, for the necrotic stack, so he'll have to kind of dip out of there soon enough. They're starting to get their CC chain ready as well. Yeah, we saw the stun come out of mirrors already, and now still has 45 stacks. Even with the stun, it's just so many stacks applying to now immediately if you do such a big pull. But now it's kiting now, so he's away. Uh, hopefully the, the mobs die soon, because if they don't die soon, some uh, random damage dealer is going to die. You can see Fragments is already off, because he knows he has aggro, so he is the one kiting now. This is actually very well done by them, because they know now has to kite, and once now is not generating any aggro anymore, it's going to be Fragments who has aggro. So he went with now as well, and just outranged him as well so no one died very well done by them popping their shroud now and getting up to the next boss yeah they get up to the next boss and not just that but they will shadow meld there to get rid of that last earth shaper that was sapped on the side from jinji
SMG not wanting to deal with that at all. The remaining 3% will likely come from the Earth Ragers on the path up here, and they'll only pull that towards the end of Azeroth. Now, we know this boss is very difficult in terms of front-loaded damage with these Earth Ragers. We saw it earlier, just how dangerous they can be with a couple of deaths on the Buff War team. They have 13 seconds left on their Bloodlust. We'll have to see if they want to commit it here, as Methodene has finally downed the first boss and will be doing their own large pull. Now, they had 3% trash advantage, uh, not something too substantial, but it will allow them to not have to pull about two or three more mobs over what method you had to do. Yeah, we see some more saps coming in here as well for our method in a side because, as you said, it just has more percentage. And uh, we'll see how they do. We can see Shakib also just popping off in damage, as you can see right now. This is the strength of the DK. This is why they can do, uh, do those huge pulls. It's because those DKs have the huge burst AOE cooldowns. You can see the mobs dying so quickly, but Nerf actually dropping very low, and he does have a huge amount of bursting stacks. This is why he's cutting back, but he should be able to survive here. Well, method you is fighting Astarok. Uh, thankfully, sir, Elia was fixated by two of the rages at the very start and of course if your healer is fixated it's much better on the dps because they can just continue hitting the bus without thinking about anything while the healer is doing all the jobs as usual as usual of course <laughs> method and a getting right up in the gully of azrock getting ready to pull as well uh method you're already halfway through azrock 97 percent trash on the board versus method and a's 98 but it looks like a bit of disaster here as nerf clap actually i believe accidentally pulled on the side and lighty had to go with him same with shakib jb safely out of combat so he he will be able to res the rest of his group, but that's an extra 15 seconds worth of deaths on the board, not to mention the amount of time taken here for the res and the quick rebuff before they get started on Azrock. So the last thing they needed when they're already a fair bit behind on Method EU was this kind of slip up, but they get started nonetheless as Method EU gets the last one third of health on Azrock, reaching that 35%. I think the, uh, this, like the few deaths that just happened to Method and A, is not actually a huge problem because they were behind either way. So something has to happen for Method U for Me uh, for Method and A to win, right? So, but it's bad for their mentality because if they know it's such a close matchup, they're one game behind already. They don't know what's going on with Method U. They don't have a screen to watch what Method U is doing. They don't know if they're ahead, if they're behind. So for their mentality, this is so bad because they know now Method U probably has a clean run. They're probably doing really well, and we just lost three people and we had to have a rest a mass rest back up so now the pressure is going to be on them even higher than before and it might affect their mentality well method U is already done with Asrock and has to uh, only kill those two stone fears to get the 100 percent trash yeah and they're going to skip the fifth reaping wave here in a moment as well you can already see them getting ready to go near that mine card and they're going to rush over right away uh, i believe they're actually just going to shadow meld it up here by the looks of it and they're going to go around the side of the minefield which of course we've seen some teams do before rather than just go down the mine cart in the middle uh, headed by Zelia here. They've proc their 100% and they're getting ready to run through the rest of this trash and then Shadow... Oh, no, of course they didn't Shadow Meld. They have to use Shadow Meld here for this trash right in front of Rixa Flux Flame. So now goes on ahead, charges through, leaps across the platform as the rest of the party goes off to the side to make sure that they don't have any residual aggro. Methane trying to claw back into action. 44% here on Azeroth. Now, Method U does have their Bloodlust available back now, but I'm pretty sure they're only going to get one more Bloodlust, so they can either save it for the last boss or they use it on this boss, depending on what they want to do. Now, Rick's of Life Flame is a, a difficult boss, specifically in the tank damage, because it does do a lot of magic damage. Uh, the other difficult mechanic is this, the magic debuff that the boss applies to the two closest players. But because the, of the setup that they're running with uh, the AMS and the cloak from the rogue and also just the monk cooldowns, they can very well handle handle the debuff. They can well handle it indeed now getting chunked there. Just a bit of damage, of course, as we mentioned, the fire can only really use that ignore pain just to help stifle some of the damage so Zelia can sit in there in cat, uh, kitty form and just get as much damage as possible. We know Zelia likes to min-max and play as offensive as he can throughout the dungeon. Certainly always adds up. A lot of different abilities, including Spell Reflect, as uh, Nagura mentioned, that can be used for those chemical burns to make sure that furthermore, uh, not only is the boss taking increased damage, but the players are not taking too much damage so that once again, Zelia can only hit dispel one and then get right back to DPS. As Rock 6% here for Method and A, 98% on the board, and they do have uh, one of those Stone Furies, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they do. Uh, that is going to proc their 100% trash, and therefore the fifth reaping, which they will run down and skip. But they are... Uh this is, a, this is a fair bit behind. I mean, I, I, you pretty much nailed it, Nagura. If Method U doesn't wipe, then the game's pretty much done. Yeah, I think Method U just having such a good time here, just their strategy so insanely fast. I think it was all about this very first trash before the first boss. The 80% trash that Method U got was just 
a minute or two even faster than method and a it was such a good strategy that they pulled off here i think it's even going to be a sub 20 minutes matter loads here from method u which we haven't seen before from any other team so if method u does have a clean run uh, killing rick's uh, uh flux flame here and also killing the last boss without any more uh, incidents then it's just going to be an insane time by method u and it's going to be a 2 0 for them but again it's still this boss left and the last boss left for method u they didn't make a lot of mistakes so far so it's unlikely but it can happen yeah they're certainly in the zone right now and they do have the safety net if one of the battle res is available too with two different characters that could do it so even if the healer goes down fragments can get them up if uh, somebody else goes down zelia or fragments can get them up uh, if it's not fragments himself so a lot of options here just in case things start to get out of control for them method and a once again 80 percent on rix of flux lane so they're a good almost 75 percent uh, behind the 70 percent now behind on the boss versus their eu counterpart and the extra three deaths on the board uh, they certainly have their work cut out for them yeah, it's so much, to be honest, it's just so much pressure for Method A. They've always, they, they've played against Method U, I believe, eight times uh, against them in the Cups. And this is the eighth time for them to play against them. And they've lost every single time the whole series. Just so devastating, so much pressure on them to, to win these games against their uh, most difficult co uh, competitor here, Method U. And now, if, if they actually end, end up losing this map, then they have to play... Uh, three maps tomorrow if they want to win the whole tournament, which is going to be such uh, so much more preparation they will have to do compared to Method U. And it's also the, the, the BlizzCon spot on the line, as we talked about earlier. So just so much pressure on Method and A to win this whole thing. While Method U just kind of, they're expected to win. They're there. Uh, haven't lost a single map before. So Method U just on the last boss here. Uh, they're comfortable. They have only one death so far. Very well by uh, very well done by Method U here. Well indeed and they commit their bloodlust here early on in phase one as Mogul Razzling is already halfway through that first phase at 75% while Rixa for Method and A is only still at 30% not to mention after that they need to mount up do all the trash skip up the hill and then get started on Mogul as well. Method U about to have their uh, bloodlust fall off and they will be transitioning the boss in about 15%. Yeah, uh, one th yeah, interesting that they choose to use the Bloodlust as a start. I think we've also seen a team before that used it on the pool instead of later in Phase 2. It might have just been because of cooldowns being up, uh, specifically uh, DK cooldowns, which are very important for their single target damage. If they have their 10-minute uh, army ready and other big cooldowns, then the Bloodlust actually boosts their damage by quite a bit, while other classes might not be so affected by them, like a Rogue who constantly does have cooldowns up, because we know Rogues just have everything all the time. And now <laughs> Rest Tank is cool. about to... Uh, actually, sadly, getting hit by the by the frontal here by the cone, but he did manage to survive. Of course, also the missile is being t uh, targeting Salia because he's the only ranged target, so he will get every single one of them. You will indeed, and yeah, he, he cut it a bit close there. It took two ticks of that Gatling gun and dipped to 13%. But again, they do, as we mentioned, they have the safety net. Uh, Fragnus can't res them just in case. So they, they've gone over to transition here. The uh, oil drums or oil barrels have dropped across the arena here as Amir's make sure to bait the first one over there in the corner, and they deal with the uh, the two Sky Scorchers that come up for them. Method A has finally started on Mogul Razdunk. The rest of the run for Method A has actually been, like, very clean. Everything's been great for them. Just that one hiccup with Shakib, and uh, he just unlocked got charged again but really it was the three deaths on Azarok that set them back a fair ways and in my opinion uh, and I think you back me up on this just probably not the best strategy for that first bloodlust I think method EU certainly had a, a bit more use efficient use out of it and as they start phase two here yeah, this is also something I've been talking about earlier, right? If Method EU uh, was watching Method NA do the matter load yesterday and they were like, you know what, uh, we're approximately a minute slower than them, let's do our, let's fix our strategy. We need to be faster to beat Method NA because we're going to play them in matter load tomorrow. So Method EU had like a whole day to figure an, out a matter load strategy to be faster than Method NA. And they definitely figured out a strategy, as we can see here. Uh, having a sub 20 minute matter load just so incredibly fast here, very well done by method you just insane strategy and insane play efficiency coming out of a uh, method you here as they're about to down mogul rest tank here with only one death in the whole dungeon yeah and one death and it was really just an unlucky death i believe azalea got charged or clipped by something early on in the trash they had to commit their battle rest to it but was no problem for them and certainly didn't hiccup them at all as mogul rest dunk reaches single digits of percent here eight percent now azalea baits out the last homing missile and we should maybe get one more gatling gun here method a doing what they can and they're already start cheering in the background here I believe as Mogul Razdunk goes down to 2% they can feel it they don't know where the other team is but they can feel it as Mogul Razdunk goes down here and Method EU maintains their undefeated streak cheering in the background and they have secured a spot for BlizzCon